USCHO.com. This is the USCHO Game of the Week podcast from U.S. College Hockey Online at USCHO.com. An in-depth look at this week's top college hockey matchup and a preview of the other big games. Welcome to the USCHO.com Game of the Week podcast for Thursday, January 3rd, 2019. I'm Ed Trefsker alongside Jim Connolly. The Game of the Week is Saturday's game as Miami visits Providence, the second of a two-game series. And we are joined now by the head coach of the Miami Red Hawks, and that is Rico Blasi. Uh, Rico, a happy new year. Thanks for joining us again. Uh, it's probably nice to get the skates back on after you know having about a month off there. <laughs> well, happy new year to you guys as well. Uh, you, got, you got to play an exhibition game, and I noticed a lot of coaches uh, this year, particularly in your conference, scheduled their exhibition game in the middle of the season. And so that it does seem that there's a, a clear message. We want to have a chance to get back, get our legs under us, work off some of the rust. Is that something you're seeing working pretty well for your team? Uh, well, we, we've done it a few times, you know, with, uh, with the way our schedules landed the last couple of years, we, uh, uh, we felt like, uh, you know, with, with our break coming just before exams and then, uh, having a, a long period of us not playing a game, we felt it was important to at least uh, go through the routine and try to get everybody, uh, uh, you know, some shifts with, uh, with their lines and their deep pairings and uh, get some guys in the lineup that maybe haven't played a, a whole lot in the first half. So, um, you know, sometimes it works uh, well, sometimes it doesn't work so well, but uh, you know, for us uh, this year, we had a few injuries uh, in the first half that uh, we were able to heal up and, uh, and get them back in the lineup and uh, hopefully be ready to go for this weekend. It does seem sensible to play that game. When I look at your schedule, you know, some teams played up until about the 15th of December. Your team was done December 1st. Uh, you, If you didn't play that exhibition game, you would have had more than a month off before this weekend's uh, series at Providence. Uh, I guess if you're talking about injuries, it's probably nice to be able to get some of that time. But also, it sounds like you had the entire exam period to to let the kids focus on on the academics and not have to worry as much about hockey. Well, no doubt. I mean, at, at this, uh, we're still a, a student athlete first, and uh, you know, we always uh, try to give them exam week off. Uh, I don't think we've had too many games during exams over the years, so they've been able to, to focus on that, and and that's part of the responsibility being part of our program is to make sure they're they're doing their very best, not only on the ice, but off the ice as well. And, uh, you know, I'm proud of our team. We had over a 3.3 uh, grade point average, so they're doing their job in the classroom as well. And uh, ultimately, that's uh, that's an important part of uh, of our culture and, and what we do. But uh, if you look at our, our at our season, we went right off the bat against Alabama Huntsville. We played in the icebreaker where most teams had a week off in the first half during their game. Uh, schedule we did not our week off came at the end of it so it's really kind of a, 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 a you know if you look at it we really didn't have any any time to rest and I think sometimes when you have a young team and a lot of freshmen um, we were starting to kind of get to that point where we needed a little break and um, it just so happened to be at the end of the of the first half for us with student athletes having to be so disciplined about their schedule between academics and practice and travel how much different is this semester break for the, the players? How much different is their routine? Well, now they get to, for the next three, three and a half weeks, they get to be just hockey players and come to the rink and, and just do things that will prepare them on the ice and maybe do a little extra, um, you know, skill session or, or something like that. So it's a real nice change for, for our team. Uh, uh, it comes at a good time where we can get, you know, everybody back into, you know, some sort of a routine in terms of hockey and, uh, and then uh, once we establish that, then we can get back to, to going to class here at uh, the end of January, early February. We are talking with Rico Blasi, head coach at Miami University. And Rico, look, we had a chance to catch up with you on the spotlight, USCHO spotlight earlier in the season. Let's catch up a little bit where the team is to, to this point. I look at your schedule. Uh, only one loss in your last five games, but a lot of ties. That's kind of a, a one of those crazy phenomena. Sometimes teams, I know Michigan at this point has six ties on their schedule already. Uh, one of those things that just you're happy to sometimes get ties. Maybe you'd like a little bit more than ties. Uh, take, take us through what's been going on. 
Well, I think, you, you know, as a coach, you're always looking from week to week and the, and the progression and the development, the growth of your team. And um, I think we've, we've done that, uh, you know, outside of maybe one, one or two games, I think we've played, you know, fairly consistent within our, within our structure. And, um, you know, you you know, at the, at the end of the first half, you kind of evaluate where we're at. And, you know, I think the record probably shows exactly what the stats will tell you. And, um, we know we need to get better in certain areas. We know that, but, uh, at the end of the day, we want to, we want to continue to grow and, and, uh, try to be playing our best hockey at the right time of the year. So, um, you know, I, I like our young team. We work hard. We, uh, you know, I think we're in every game. I think we, uh, when we play together as a team, we're, we're effective. And when we're not playing as a team, then obviously we're not effective. And, and I think the the scores around the country are indicative of, you know, the parody in college hockey. Anybody can beat anybody on any given night. You have to bring your A game and, and bringing your A game really just only allows you to be in the game. And then you've got to execute a couple of plays here and there, both offensively and defensively to, to be successful. Rico, you hear coaches all the time talk about building an identity and building an identity for a team and sometimes talk about that as a process that it takes, you know, maybe sometimes the entire season. Has your team built an identity? And and if so, how do you what do you feel that identity is? Well, I think we're we're a really hardworking team We're we're going to we're going to come to, you know, battle every night. Uh, I feel like we've built some resiliency in our game and um, the way we've had to battle back maybe in games and just uh, fight through some adversity. So um, I, I think we're starting to kind of, you know, shape our, our identity in, in that uh, in those two things of uh, hard work and resiliency. And um, again, w- when we stay together as a team and play the team game, um, you know, we could be effective. This is the USCHO Game of the Week podcast. We're talking with Miami head coach Rico Blasi and Rico, I look at your situation and goal. Obviously, Ryan Larkin has uh, carried a lot of the water for you, but you, you've had a, you've found a way to uh, give uh, Jordan Newhalski, who's a transfer from Alabama Huntsville, uh, some time in net. What have you thought about your goaltenders to this point, and what would you like to see maybe improve over the second half? Well, I, I've liked our goaltending. Uh, Ryan's played really well when he's been in net, and Jordan's come in for uh, a few games and helped uh, you know carry the load and. Uh, I think day to day um, they push each other. I think it's a good relationship uh, with Jordan being a little bit older and a little bit more, uh, you know, uh, experienced and uh, and just a, a different type of, uh, um, you know, character. I mean, he's he's a hardworking guy. He uh, doesn't take uh, things for granted, and he pushes uh, Ryan, who's very talented, and, uh, in ways that uh, you know maybe Ryan hasn't been pushed before. So. Um, you know, they have to be consistent, uh, as do uh, the rest of our, our players. But uh, goaltending is a, is a huge part of uh, whether you win games or not. So we, we've got to make sure that they're feeling good and, and playing at a high level. On the other side of the puck, the offense at this point, uh, I'm not sure where you want it to be, but I'm sure somewhere above 35th in the country uh, would be appealing. What what? What goes well? What what is going right when the offense is scoring, and what's the struggle when that when they're not scoring? Well, I think probably our special teams uh, power play needs to you know kind of uh, uh, pick up a little bit of the slack. We've we've had some good opportunities, some good looks on the PP. We just haven't been able to finish, and and that's a big part of the game. Uh, you know, uh, uh, to me though, the 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 scoring is one thing, but uh, playing good team defense is another. And, um, you know, I, I would, uh, if I had my, my way and the way the, the development, the growth would be, would be to start from the goal out. And, uh, I think we've, we've tried to do that. We've been a lot better and more determined, uh, away from the puck. So now it's time to, to kind of put it all together and hopefully our, our offense gets rolling. Your opponent this weekend is Providence, two games on the road. It's the final two non-conference games before you, uh, finish out your season with an NCHC slate. Uh, what are your thoughts on Providence? I'm sure you've watched them on film right now. What do, what do you like about their team? What do you know will be some of your challenges? Well, a great team. Um, you know, and there's no doubt about it. There, there really is no weakness on their team. They play a real good team game and well coached. And um, you know, we've this is going to be what we're going to see the rest of the year in, in our league. So this is a good tune-up for us. And 
getting on the road and, and making sure that we're ready to go for the rest of the year and the intensity that you have to play with and the determination that you have to play with. And, uh, you know, the ebbs and flows that will happen during this weekend will be uh, a good uh, a good reminder of uh, to us of what we need to do in preparation for the rest of the season. Before I let you go, I have to ask uh, New Year's Day. It was a big stage, the Winter Classic, and uh, Sean Corrali ends up with the game-winning goal for the Boston Bruins. Uh, local kid, a pride of Miami uh, University. What, do, what are your thoughts on watching him play in the NHL right now? Well, it's always great to see our guys play in, in the National Hockey League. Sean is uh, you know, one of those guys that uh, is always texting and always calling and uh, wanting to know what's going on on campus. So he's He's a, he's one of those guys you're, you're always, uh, uh, you know, uh, in the mornings you're, you're looking to see what's going on and what happened in the games. And I had texted Sean earlier that morning, just wishing him luck and to have fun. And, um, you know, he texted back right away. And, um, you know, once he scored that goal, I, I, it reminded me of the goal he scored in the outdoor game that we played against Western Michigan a few years ago. So, um, uh, kind of similar, uh, net front presence and, uh, pretty similar uh, reaction after he scored. Uh, that's uh, that's a, a character trait of Sean Corrali and his uh, uh, goal scoring uh, celebrations. Yeah, he seems to have that celebration and that full on slam against the glass with his body down. Uh, Rico, uh, we wish you the best of luck. It'll be Providence uh, and Miami out in Providence, two games this weekend, Friday and Saturday. The Saturday game will be the USCHO game of the week. Uh, so I look forward to seeing you. Out in Providence, Rico, and best of luck the rest of the way. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Let's pause for a word from our friends from the NCAA. The Frozen Four is in Buffalo on April 11th and 13th, 2019 at Key Bank Center. Visit NCAA.com slash Frozen Four. Speed and precision. Unrelenting power. This trophy is not given. It must be earned. The 2019 NCAA Frozen Four, April 11th and 13th at KeyBank Center in Buffalo. With a shot, Sidney by Morris. Takes the shot, Richard! Visit NCAA.com slash Frozen Four and get your tickets today. This is the USCHO Game of the Week podcast from U.S. College Hockey Online. Welcome back to the Game of the Week podcast from USCHO.com. I'm Ed Trefsker with Jim Conley. Jim, uh, the game of the week, Providence and Miami on Saturday, but a two-game series. Miami was blanked for nothing, although very early in the season at the icebreaker tournament. But I think Rico was right when he said that there is nothing missing, nothing weak in the game that Providence brings. No, they really they do they do have a lot of the aspects of the game covered well. They're a good defensive team. They have a good goaltender, and their their offensive attack can move. And they they don't mind playing heavy. They don't mind playing fast. They can adjust really well. And I think at home they they tend to play pretty well on home ice this season. So uh, it'll be a tough challenge, I think, both nights for for Miami. Um, but you know, when you play the same opponent twice, I think that can be sometimes helpful. You're able to work on some of those tweaks. We know how hard it is to sweep two games for the same team back-to-back nights. Meanwhile, Miami is showing some good depth in scoring. And uh, you mentioned Ryan Larkin, and both he and Jordan Uhelski with some good numbers. Larkin's numbers, uh, 1.89 goals against and a 936 save percentage. That's got to bring a lot of confidence. That's a really, really solid goaltending line right there. The problem is that, you know, we kind of mentioned it with Rico, is they need to find a little more offense. Maybe that power play needs to get going a little more. If they can put that up over three goals a game, three and a half goals a game, and you have a goaltender in there that's only given up, you know, a little less than two, that's a pretty good differential and should be an advantage down the stretch. A goalie who puts you in that position is giving you the position to win just about yeah, every, every game. Yeah, every game, right. Well, let's take a look at some of the other things going on. The Three Rivers Classic has become one of the premier midseason tournaments in Pittsburgh, uh, hosted by Robert Morris. The host school, Robert Morris, will face Brown in the first round, and number one, St. Cloud, comes in against number 14, Union. Now, that's a great matchup. It really is. You know, I, I, I really do believe that, the, you know, uh, 
Derek Schooley did a good job of trying to get some good teams into this tournament. He knew St. Cloud and Union would be strong. Uh, Brown is one of those teams that on any given night can be very good. This is a well-run event. I had a chance to go to it about four or five years ago and watched it uh, for, you know, on all aspects, from the banquet to the accommodations for the teams. Uh, they always usually try to get a little extra time. You don't have to uh, just go in the day before and, and kind of run everything through. You usually give you an extra day. So it is one of those tournaments that's very well run. I think that that's the reason you're seeing teams like St. Cloud and Union make sure that they make this a stop on their schedule. And PPG Paints Arena in Pittsburgh, uh, where the Penguins play and where the Frozen Four will return. Uh, a terrific arena. So uh, a great event there for sure. The Ice Vegas Invitational is going on this weekend also. Number 17, uh, Western Michigan will take on UConn while St. Lawrence faces Air Force. Yeah, you know, I think that the, that Western Michigan-Connecticut game, when you look at it on paper, is almost your championship game. They're probably, you know, both of those teams are a little stronger, I think, than Air Force and St. Lawrence, but I guess that's why you play the games. Uh, I, you know, I, I like the way that UConn has played of late. They went down to Yale uh, earlier this week and earned a road win. Um, they are a team that plays pretty heavy. They're missing uh, at least one of their players at World Juniors. Got eliminated last night, so I'm not sure if that'll mean that they can be full rostered up um, when they take the ice out in Vegas. Uh, that's something I guess that'll be the call for the coaches. But uh, otherwise, you know, this should be a pretty competitive and fun field. I think that Western and Connecticut are, are the two teams that maybe stand out to me. But, you know, I think Frank Serratore is always, uh, always good for an upset and not too far from Colorado Springs Air Force. Uh, you know, maybe they can bring a few few fans down with them to uh, to Las Vegas. Nobody uh, hates going to Las Vegas. That's a city that's usually easy to attract some fans. The Air Force is able to find a few fans just about anywhere they anywhere. go. Billy Christopoulos is an outstanding goaltender, and I don't know how long memories are, but two years ago, Air Force upset Western Michigan in the NCAA tournament, and I'm sure a few players still remember that. I'm sure they wouldn't. Billy Christopoulos, he was the number one play of the week this week for U.S. College Hockey Online. Boston College is at Arizona State for a pair. The Sun Devils had what Coach Greg Power said was an awful game against Clarkson when they were blanked. They eked out a tie on the second night of the Desert Hockey Classic. Meanwhile, Boston College, it's now 23 winless games out of conference after getting shut out by Notre Dame on Monday. Uh, what do you see in this one? Well, I, you know, I, I do know that Boston College was playing some good hockey going into the break. break. You mentioned that loss to Notre Dame where they weren't able to score on the road. Uh, they have maybe at this point a little bit of a mental block when it comes to non-conference games, having been so long since they've won one. They're so good, so solid every year in Hockey East. They won the regular season title last year. They're right up there uh, battling with UMass again this year. But out of conference, it's a struggle. Now, at the same time, when you think about Arizona State, they do great at Oceanside, which is the venue for Friday night. But I believe or one of the nights I believe is going to be played. It's Friday night is going to be at Oceanside. And then Saturday night will be over in Glendale at the NHL building. And so that has been a, almost a mental block for Arizona State. I believe they have one win in 11 games there or something like that. So. Uh, they are having a hard time winning in their home building when it's the NHL facility. So maybe this is a battle of two mental blocks coming together. And, uh, you know, the, the odds are it's going to be a 2-2 tie on Saturday night. <laughs> Let's look at the ECAC. One league game matches ranked teams number 20 Cornell at number five Quinnipiac. And I should add Quinnipiac number three in the pairwise. The Bobcats having a terrific season. And they've really found a way to just kind of hit the accelerator and play good hockey uh, of late. Uh, in Cornell, they, they kind of went into the break stumbling. You know, I think they got a win in their last game, but they've been on a pretty long break here. This has been maybe almost a month for them since they've played a game. Uh, you know, now it's kind of shaking off rust. And, you know, the, the, the this game is the Saturday night game of the of the weekend for these two teams. That should help them a little bit. Um, but court, you know, Quinnipiac, they had that chance to play a game uh, last week down in uh, Long Island at the uh, New York Islanders uh, Nassau Coliseum, the old Islanders building. So they had a, they've got maybe some of their rust off. You look for them to have a little bit of an edge. And when they're at home, I think that that is such a big home ice advantage when you play in Quinnipiac. So uh, I'd look for the Bobcats to come out on top of that one. 
Uh, one series to look at in the Big Ten, uh, Penn State at Minnesota. Uh, Penn State uh, not as strong in conference play as they were out of conference in Minnesota trying to get things put together. Yeah, Minnesota, I, you know, I, I have a lot of confidence in this team. And, you know, I love what Bob Motzko has, can do as a coach, but they just haven't put it together yet. Um, down the stretch before the break, you know, they were playing pretty well. Three ties in a row, then two wins, and then they dropped the final game before the uh, – I'm sorry, that was actually just this past weekend to Ferris State. They dropped that game 3-2. So I'm trying to figure out what the identity of this team is. They they really didn't get off to the start that they wanted. You you could tell that uh, when you're losing, you know, four out of five here and there. To, you know, that's just not the start any coach wants. But I do believe that this could be a really competitive series. Penn State's offense, which was cranking out of conference – at times has been strong in, in the Big Ten, but at times they found ways to, or teams have found ways to shut them down. So it's kind of going to be w- whether this offense gets going for Penn State and whether Minnesota is just ready to play a game or two games against a tough opponent. Michigan is at uh, Notre Dame in the stadium outdoors. Hopefully Notre Dame coach Jeff Jackson snagged one of those uh, green toques that Doc Emmerich said he was trying to scarf there. Uh, at the game, but it's uh, it w- looked like a nice setup. It looked like a uh, pretty decent ice on TV on Monday. Uh, but things outdoors like that can always be uh, a, a little bit crazy. Yeah, well, it's all, obviously you're going to have to play into the weather a little bit. I, I haven't looked at the forecast for Saturday. Um, I actually thought that the ice looked good on, for the Winter Classic, and I actually thought that that looked like one of the faster winter classic games that we've seen, you know, sometimes it looks like those games are being played at half speed. I would have said that was maybe a little bit better than three quarters speed. Um, I still think when you're outdoors, the ice just can't replicate what you have in an indoor building. Um, But, you know, right now Notre Dame is playing well. Um, This should be a spectacle. I I don't know what type of a crowd they're expecting. Will they put the same 76,000 plus that they put in for the winter classic? I'm not sure. But even if you put 50 or 60,000 in there, that'll be a very good crowd. And it should be a great atmosphere. It's a special building when you really look at the whole backdrop of that campus and everything that's gone on in, in that stadium to be able to throw an ice rink right in the middle of it and put that many fans in and uh, make it a competitive setting. I think is is they've done a really good job, and I uh, I applaud Notre Dame. I, you know, I think you and I, anybody that is listening to our podcast, know I'm not a big fan of outdoor games. This is one I kind of put up there as pretty special in the way that it's being done. A single game, not a bunch of teams coming in and playing games and games and games for weekends on end. You know, have one game between two pr- pretty good rivals, Notre Dame and Michigan, uh, on that setting. I think it should be really nice. Two quick notes on that. Hopefully they don't run out of food like they did on Monday. They'll stock the concession stands a little better. And then also uh, uh, an outdoor game for college next year at uh, Air Force. And uh, Air Force has confirmed they're going to play in that stadium too. No word on the opponent yet. Let's turn to the WCHA. Two big series, Michigan Tech at Minnesota State and Bemidji at Bowling Green. Both of these series uh, should be pretty good. I mean, these are, you know, you have two nationally ranked teams going against two non-nationally ranked teams right now. Um, but, th- you know, you're you're looking at uh, Minnesota State. They didn't have the best weekend down there in Arizona. They ended up coming in fourth in that tournament, uh, a, a loss and then a tie, I believe was their uh, an overtime loss and then a tie. So they're, they're, they're probably – wanting to play some good hockey now that they're getting back home. Uh, I assume that they still will not have uh, Mike Hastings behind the bench as I, I, you know, minimally they're playing on Friday. So we, yeah, we know at this point they won't have Mike Hastings behind the bench for either of these games. um, Because even if you lose on Friday, you're playing a a bronze medal game on Saturday, but uh, you know, it's just finding ways to win Michigan tech. We know that that's a good team. They played some really good hockey over the break. Uh, and then Bowling Green and Bemidji, I, I think that Bowling Green has proven themselves. I mean, they have really played uh, great hockey of late. And Bemidji State, they they had a little bit of a struggle out in the uh, Servitory battle there in Air Force last weekend where they had to come away with a split. But I think that they're a team that knows that they want to turn things on here in the second half. And you know, no better time to do it than going into the barn of a nationally ranked opponent in your league and trying to knock them off. Finally, just to highlight what a difference a new arena makes, Dartmouth making its first trip to Bentley. Yeah, you know, I'm glad that I've seen a lot of uh, 
teams give Bentley some home games. Uh, it is a great building. It's right down the street from my house. I can walk there in about uh, 15 minutes and it's a, a fantastic facility. It's perfectly sized about, you know, 1900 seats and th- maybe they don't pack them in. I think that that's an issue that the school has. They're going to have to start marketing the product a little bit better. Um, but it is a great place to watch hockey. And obviously these teams have no fears going on the road and playing in uh, a new building that is uh, as high quality as the Bentley arena. Well, that's going to do it for this week's USCHO.com Game of the Week podcast. For Jim Conley, I'm Ed Trefsker. We'll catch you next time. This has been the USCHO Game of the Week podcast, a production of U.S. College Hockey Online. Visit USCHO.com slash podcasts to listen or subscribe. Subscribe.